Hi, my name is Dr. Olivia Ong, and I'm one of the co-authors for the for the anthology series, Women Leading the Way, alongside with 20 other powerful female leaders who are also fellow co-authors of this book. Today, I'd like to read an excerpt from my book chapter on women in Women Leading the Way. The title of my book chapter is Intuition and Leadership, How to Unleash the Power of Intuition in Decision Making. And I'll be reading an excerpt from my book chapter. The next two weeks were like hell on earth. I was experiencing acute pain in my lower back. The medication I was on made me drowsy and disorientated. Eventually, I had improved enough to be transferred to the rehabilitation hospital. I spent four months in the rehabilitation ward, learning how to live my life in a wheelchair. I learned to use a slide board to transfer myself from my bed to my wheelchair and back again. I noticed the sad faces around me. These were people who also had spinal cord injuries and were chained to a wheelchair like me. Like them, I had to learn bowel and bladder management from the specialist spinal nurses. I couldn't know what was going on for the others, but I knew that while I might have been making steady progress on the rehabilitation front, the truth of it was that I had lost all of my dignity. The experience of being a patient rather than a doctor was a traumatic one for me. I was receiving great medical care, don't get me wrong, but nothing was being done to account for the fact that I had lost all hope. A couple of months into my inpatient rehabilitation stay, I was eating lunch in the dining room with a fellow patient, Jerry, who also had a spinal cord injury. We were talking about the movie dates with our partners that were scheduled to happen over the weekend. This was a trial run to see how ready we were to cope with going back into the community in our wheelchairs. Suddenly, Rick, another patient with spinal cord injury, came into the dining room. He had an air of excitement about him. I asked him what was going on, and he started telling me about Project Walk, a rehabilitation center in San Diego in the United States that specifically helps people with spinal cord injuries to walk again. I got a bit excited myself when I heard about this. My intuition told me to pack my bags and head to Project Walk right then and there. However, overnight, I chose to ignore my intuition and just kept doing what I was being told to do by the spinal rehabilitation team at the hospital. I kept ignoring my intuition for a very long time, but I never gave up the hope of walking again. So let me turn the lens away from me and onto you for a moment. Have you ever heard your intuition telling you to follow your heart and pursue your dreams and then had logic kick in, telling you that you aren't good enough or you aren't worthy or whatever? What did you do? Did you give up on your dreams? Intuition, which is also known as gut feeling, is a vibe we get around something not being quite right. Experienced doctors often get a sense when pa a patient's story just doesn't add up. Intuition helps us make decisions in complex medical situations. Clinical evidence can only take us so far. And for anyone who's open to it, the heart and gut does the rest. Sadly, most doctors aren't open to it. For my part, I'm incredibly grateful I was finally able to actually hear my intuition. 12 months, in fact, after I heard about Project Walk from Rick. Remember Rick? He came in bursting and excited about and telling us about Spinal Cord Injury Recovery Center in San Diego called Project Walk. This was one of those defining moments where your life is literally set on a path by choosing one option over another. It happened during the Christmas period in 2009 when I was lying on the bed with John in the supported accommodation we were renting while our house was being modified to suit my wheelchair. My intuition told me to pack my bags and leave for San Diego so I could check myself into Project Walk Paralysis Recovery Center. Fortunately, my boss was totally understanding and supportive when I told him I was planning to go away for two years to focus on my rehabilitation. I was really touched when he gave me his blessings and told me to go ahead and strive for my dream to walk again. I was full of hope as John and I packed our bags for the long haul flight to San Diego via Los Angeles. There was no doubt in my mind about having a made a heart-centered decision based on intuition that was pointing me in the right direction. However, when we got to the airport the following day, I started feeling nervous. This was the first time I had traveled internationally as a disabled person. And a number of doubt-based thoughts went through my mind like, what if the airline damages my wheelchair during the flight? I'm happy to report that everything went smoothly and my wheelchair arrived intact. 
In fact, this wheelchair still accompanies me on trips, both overseas and within Australia. 